As the blood moon rose over the mist-shrouded forest, bathing the ancient stones in an eerie crimson glow, Samantha Ray's fingers tightened around the relic in her pocket. Even through the worn leather pouch, she could feel it pulsing with power, like a heartbeat in her palm. She shouldn't have taken it. She knew that now, with a creeping certainty that turned her blood to ice. But when she'd found it hidden in the secret compartment of her late mother's desk, it had called to her, like a siren song she was powerless to resist. The Amulet of Azeroth, an enchanted relic of immense power, forged in the fires of the underworld by the dark sorcerer Malachi himself. Legend said it could grant the bearer any wish, but at a terrible cost. A cost paid in blood and souls. Samantha shivered, pulling her black cloak tighter around her shoulders as an owl hooted mournfully in the distance. She would thought she could handle the amulet's dark allure, that her fledgling powers would be enough to keep its malevolent influence at bay. She was a daughter of the Ravenwood Coven, after all. Her witch's blood potent and pure. But she'd underestimated the depths of its corruption and the lengths others would go to possess it. A twig snapped behind her, and Samantha whirled, hard in her throat. A figure emerged from the shadows of the trees, tall and gaunt, his features obscured by a hooded black robe. Going somewhere, my dear? The voice was cold and achingly familiar. Alistair, Samantha breathed, fear nodding her gut. Her stepfather, the man who had coveted her mother's power and legacy for as long as Samantha could remember. The man who would stop at nothing to claim the amulet for himself. Alistair lowered his hood, revealing a face as harsh and unforgiving as the landscape. His eyes, pale and piercing as a winter moon, fixed on the pocket where the amulet lay hidden. I know you have it, Samantha. He took a step toward her, his dark aura crackling with malice. Give it to me and I may yet spare your life. Samantha backed away, heart pounding. She knew Alistair's offer was as empty as his soul. The moment he had the amulet, she was as good as dead. Her hand closed around the relic, its power surging through her like black fire. She could feel it whispering to her, dark promises of strength and retribution. All she had to do was unleash it. Never! She spat, drawing on every ounce of her own magic to resist its seductive pull. I'll die before I let you have it. Alistair's face contorted with rage. Then die you shall. He raised his hands, fingers curled like claws as he began to chant in a guttural, demonic tongue. Samantha braced herself, summoning her own counter-curse. But before the first word passed her lips, a blinding light exploded between them, sending them both staggering back. A figure materialized from the heart of the glare, tall and broad, armored in gleaming silver. A knight. But like no knight Samantha had ever seen. Runes of power glowed along his breastplate, pulsing in time with the amulet. And when he turned his helm toward her, eyes as blue as the sacred fire of the solstice blazed from behind the visor. The cursed knight, Alistair hissed, face twisting with hatred and fear. Impossible. The knight ignored him, striding to Samantha's side. Up close, she could feel the thrum of ancient magic that cloaked him like a second skin. Magic that called to her own, like a dark symphony, only they could hear. Samantha Ray. His voice was deep and rich, echoing with centuries of sorrow and longing. He held out a gauntleted hand. I've waited a thousand years for you. With a shaking hand, Samantha reached out, skin tingling with electricity, where she touched him. And in that moment, she understood. Her fate, her destiny, was entwined with his. Two souls, bound by blood and darkness. Together, they would either break the curse that had damned them both, or be consumed by it. As Alistair's enraged howl split the night, Samantha grabbed the knight's hand and they leapt as one into the waiting shadows of the forest. The battle for the amulet, for their very souls, had only just begun. The forest closed around them like the jaws of some great beast as Samantha, and the cursed knight fled deeper into its shadowed depths. Branches clawed at her cloak, roots seeming to twist underfoot to impede her steps. The very air felt heavy, pressed close with ancient malice. 
but it was the weight of the knight's gauntleted hand in her own that sent Samantha's heart racing, every nerve in her body attuned to his presence. She could feel the thrum of his power, the dark whisper of the amulet's magic entwining with her own until she couldn't tell where she ended, and he began. Who are you? She breathed when they finally paused at the base of a towering oak, its gnarled roots spreading like tentacles over the forest floor. What is this connection between us? The knight turned to face her, the runes on his armor glowing softly in the gloom. I am Gideon, once a paladin of the sacred order of Lux. His voice was rough with pain, with the weight of centuries. And like you, I am bound to the amulet of Azeroth. Samantha's fingers tightened reflexively on the relic, its power pulsing in response. How? One a- Gideon bowed his head. A thousand years ago, I was tasked with protecting the amulet, with keeping it from the hands of those who would use its power for evil. But I was betrayed by the one I trusted most. My own brother, Malachi Dotto. A chill slithered down Samantha's spine. Malachi Dotnal. The dark sorcerer? of legend. The creator of the amulet. Malachi sought the amulet's power for himself, Gideon continued, voice hollow with age-old grief. When I tried to stop him, he cursed me, bound my soul to the amulet, condemned me to walk the earth as an undead wraith until the relic could be destroyed. Samantha's heart clenched. An eternity of suffering, of loneliness. She couldn't imagine the strength it must have taken to endure such a fate. And now the amulet has chosen a new bearer. Gideon's glowing gaze met hers, searing into her very soul. You, Samantha Ray, a daughter of magic, with the power to break the curse and set us both free. Samantha shook her head, suddenly overwhelmed by the enormity of it all. I... I don't know how. My magic... It's not strong enough. It will be. Gideon's hands came up to grip her shoulders, the cold metal of his gauntlets, a shocking contrast to the heat of his gaze. Together, we will find a way. We must. A crack of thunder shattered the moment, followed by a blaze of sickly green light that set the leaves around them withering and curling. Samantha smelled brimstone, tasted the acrid tang of dark magic on the air. How, oh, sir? she whispered, fear clutching her heart with icy talons. Her stepfather had found them. Gideon pushed her behind him, drawing his sword in a ring of silvered steel. The blade blazed with holy fire, the sacred flames of Lux that even the darkest magic could not touch. Stay behind me, he ordered, as shadows began to coalesce between the trees, taking the form of nightmarish beasts with glowing ember eyes and slavering jaws. Alistair's Constructs he means to take the amulet by force. Samantha summoned her own magic, feeling it crackle along her skin like lightning. She might be new to her powers, but she was a Ravenwood. She would not cower in the face of evil. Side by side, witch and cursed knight braced for the onslaught. The first of the shadow beasts lunged, claws outstretched and fangs bared. Gideon's blessed blade cleaved it in two, the creature dissipating in a vile miasma. But more surged forward, a tide of darkness hell-bent on their destruction. Samantha thrust out her hands, channeling the amulet's power into a searing arc of black flame. It consumed the constructs, leaving nothing but piles of ash. But with each one she destroyed, she could feel the relic's corruption seeping into her bones, whispering seductively in the depths of her mind. Give in, it crooned. Embrace the darkness. Wield me, and none shall stand against you. Not even Alistair. Samantha! Gideon's shout snapped her back to herself. She blinked, horrified to find her free hand extended toward the largest of the beasts, the amulet's power gathering to blast the creature to oblivion, along with Gideon. With a cry, she wrenched herself back, the amulet's hold breaking like a physical chain. The backlash sent her to her knees black spots dancing across her vision. Dimly, she heard Gideon dispatching the last of the constructs, felt his strong arms lifting her, as if she weighed nothing at all. It's too strong, she choked out, clutching at his breastplate. 
Tears of shock and fear streamed down her face, soaking into the shining metal. I can't control it. It's going to destroy me. Mendios? No. Gideon's arms tightened around her, one hand coming up to cradle her face with such tenderness she thought her heart might shatter. I will not let that happen. I swear it on my life. But before Samantha could respond, a slow clap cut through the shadows. A figure stepped into the smoky light of Gideon's sword. Alistair, his black robe swirling around him like a living thing. Touching, he sneered, the greed in his eyes belying his mocking tone. The desperate vows of the doomed and damned. But even your holy blade cannot protect her from the amulet's true power, paladin. In the end, it will claim her. As it's claimed all who dare to wield it. Never, Gideon snarled. He shifted Samantha to one arm, leveling his sword at Alistair's chest. She is stronger than you know. Than even she knows. Alistair laughed, the sound like bones snapping in the dark. We shall see. He raised his hands, power gathering between his palms in a roiling mass of shadow. But not before I pry that amulet from her cold, dead fingers. Gideon pushed Samantha behind him once more, holy fire blazing along his blade as he charged Alistair with a wordless battle cry. Alistair thrust his hands forward, a bolt of black lightning sizzling from his fingertips, to meet the paladin head-on. The clash of dark and sacred power was cataclysmic, sending Samantha tumbling back into the grasping branches of the oak. Blinded by the conflagration, she staggered to her feet and found herself alone. Gideon! His name tore from her throat as she spun in a frantic circle, squinting into the strange fey luminescence that seemed to have replaced the hellish glow of battle. Gideon, where are you? Only the sigh of the wind through the leaves answered her. That, and a growing bone-deep sense of wrongness. The trees surrounding her were taller, older, their trunks silvery and twisted like something out of a dream. And filtering through their pearlescent canopy was a light she'd only ever seen in the most ancient of tomes. The light of the Fey realms. The amulet pulsed against her chest, its power a dark and seductive counterpoint to the eerie beauty pressing in from all sides. With mounting horror, Samantha realized the truth. The amulet had spirited her away. Away from Gideon, away from Alistair and the battle that would decide both their fates. And unless she could find a way back, she would be lost forever in the mists of fairy. Samantha stood frozen, barely daring to breathe as she stared at the alien beauty of the fey realm. The air itself seemed to shimmer with enchantment, every leaf and petal pulsing with a soft inner glow. It was a world of wonders, of marvels beyond her wildest imaginings. And it terrified her to her very core. She knew the stories, the warnings passed down through generations of witches. The Fae were as ancient as they were capricious, their whims and desires as mercurial as they were dangerous. To draw their attention was to court disaster. And now, here she was, a mortal lost in their world, with only a cursed amulet to light her way. The relic throbbed against her chest, its power a seductive whisper in her mind. It had brought her here for a reason. She could feel it, sense the dark purpose that lay coiled within its heart. But what that purpose was, she couldn't begin to fathom. A sudden rustling in the undergrowth set her heart pounding. She whirled, hands raised to cast a defensive spell, and found herself face to face with a creature that seemed to have sprung straight from the pages of a fairy tale. It had the body of a great stag, its pelt a shimmering silver that seemed to cast back the light of the fey realm in a dazzling array of colors. But where its head should have been rose, the torso of a man, tall and lean, with features as fine-boned and ethereal as the rest of him. A pair of antlers as delicate and branching as frost on a window pane grew from his brow. Welcome, daughter of magic, the stag man said, his voice as deep and resonant as the forest itself. The amulet has chosen well. Samantha's hands lowered fractionally, though her guard remained up. Who are you? Why has the amulet brought me here? The stag man inclined his head, a gesture of respect that seemed at odds with his wild, fey appearance. I am 
Kidmon, emissary of the Seely Court. And you, Samantha Ray, are the key to a prophecy long foretold. Samantha's blood ran cold. A prophecy. It was always a prophecy. Some grand, ineffable destiny she was meant to fulfill, regardless of her own wants or desires. The weight of it settled on her shoulders like a leaden cloak, the burden of fate pressing down until she thought she might crumple beneath it. What prophecy? She asked, her voice sounding small and lost to her own ears. What does it have to do with me? Kedmon's eyes, a piercing amber that seemed to see straight through to her soul, softened with something like sympathy. The amulet of Azeroth was forged for a purpose, child. To bring balance to the realms of mortals and fae alike. For centuries that balance has been skewed, the dark magic of Malachi's curse seeping into the very fabric of our worlds like a poison. He took a step toward her, his hooves making no sound on the spongy forest floor. But you, Samantha, you have the power to set it right. To break the curse and restore the equilibrium that was lost so long ago. Samantha shook her head, a bitter laugh bubbling up in her throat. Me? I'm just a novice witch, barely in control of my own magic. How am I supposed to break a curse that's endured for a thousand years? With this, Kaidmon reached out one long finger brushing the amulet where it lay against her chest. Samantha shuddered at the contact, the relic's power sparking and sizzling like a live wire. The amulet of Azeroth is more than just a repository of dark magic. It is a conduit, a channel for the very forces of creation itself. In the hands of one with a pure heart and a strong will, it can be used for great good. A memory flashed through Samantha's mind, sharp and painful as a knife's blade. Her mother's face, pale and drawn as she lay on her deathbed. The rasping whisper of her final words, a secret entrusted to her daughter alone. In the darkest hour, when all hope seems lost, remember the light within, my darling. It will guide you home. At the time, Samantha had thought it no more than the fevered ramblings of a dying woman. But now, now she wondered if her mother had known more than she let on. If she had foreseen the path her daughter would one day walk. What must I do? She asked, squaring her shoulders beneath the weight of destiny. If this was her fate, then she would meet it head on. For her mother. For Gideon. For the sake of all the realms. Kedmon smiled, a fierce, feral thing that sent a shiver down Samantha's spine. You must seek out the heart of the forest. There, in the very cradle of the Fey Realm's power, the amulet's true purpose will be revealed. He gestured with one elegant hand, and a path seemed to open up before them, winding away into the shimmering depths of the forest. But beware, child. The road ahead is fraught with peril. The dark forces that seek to control the amulet will stop at nothing to claim it for their own. Samantha's hand closed around the relic, feeling its power pulse in time with her own heartbeat. I'm not afraid, she said, and in that moment, it was true. The amulet had chosen her. Gideon believed in her. She would not falter now. Drawing in a deep, steadying breath, she stepped forward onto the path. But before she could take more than a handful of strides, Kaidmon's voice stopped her in her tracks. One more thing, he said, and there was a gravitas to his tone that made her blood run cold. The curse that binds Gideon to the amulet. It can only be broken by an act of true love. A love pure and selfless, willing to sacrifice all for the sake of the other. Samantha stared at him, her heart a wild, fluttering thing in her chest. What are, what are you saying? Cadmon's eyes were fathomless, twin pools of amber that seemed to hold the secrets of the universe. Gideon's fate and your own are entwined with the amulet's destiny. Only together can you hope to break the curse and restore balance to the realms. But the path to true love is never an easy one. It will require great courage, great faith, and even greater sacrifice. A chill walked its icy fingers down Samantha's spine. Sacrifice? The word echoed in her mind like a death knell, a grim portent of the trials to come. But beneath the fear... Beneath the doubt and uncertainty, a kernel of something warm and bright took root in her heart. Love. 
Love. It had been there all along, she realized. From the moment Gideon had appeared to her in the forest, a shining knight sworn to her protection. She loved him, with a depth and ferocity that took her breath away. And she knew, with a bone-deep certainty, that he loved her too. I understand, she said softly. The words a vow, a covenant sealed in blood and magic. I will do whatever it takes. For Gideon. For all of us. Cademon inclined his head, a gesture of respect and farewell. Then go, daughter of magic. Fulfill your destiny. And may the stars light your path. With a final, steadying breath, Samantha turned to face the winding road ahead. The heart of the forest awaited. Along with the truth of the amulet's power, and the key to saving the man she loved. But as she took her first step into the unknown, a sudden, searing pain lanced through her chest. She staggered, one hand flying to the amulet as it flared with a blinding, malevolent light. The curse, she realized through a haze of agony. It was fighting her, trying to assert its control. Gritting her teeth, Samantha pushed back against the dark magic, pouring every ounce of her own power into the battle of wills. But it was strong, so much stronger than she could have imagined. She could feel it sinking its claws into her mind, her heart, seeking to claim her as it had claimed Gideon so long ago. No, she growled, her voice raw with pain and determination. I will not yield. I will not let it take me. Yin. But even as the words left her lips, she could feel her strength fading, her resolve crumbling beneath the onslaught of the amulet's curse. Black spots danced across her vision, the world tilting and swaying around her. She fell to her knees, the damp loam of the forest floor cool against her palms. And then, through the encroaching darkness, she heard it. A voice, achingly familiar, calling her name. Gideon Dot. He was here, in the Fey realm, seeking her, fighting for her, just as he always had. With a final, desperate surge of will, Samantha pushed herself to her feet. She staggered forward, one hand outstretched, reaching for the sound of his voice. If she could just reach him, just touch him one last time. But the curse was too strong. As the darkness claimed her, dragging her down into its smothering embrace, Samantha's last thought was a prayer, a desperate plea to the stars above. Gideon, she whispered, as the light faded and the shadows closed in. Find me. And, uh, and then she knew no more. Darkness. It was the first thing Samantha became aware of as consciousness slowly, painfully returned. A darkness so complete, so all-encompassing, it seemed to press down on her from all sides, smothering and oppressive. For a moment, she wondered if she had gone blind. If the amulet's curse had stolen her sight along with her strength. But then, as her eyes adjusted, she began to make out shapes in the gloom. The gnarled roots of ancient trees, twisting and writhing like serpents. The jagged edges of rock formations, their surfaces glinting with an oily sheen. And there, in the distance, a faint, pulsing glow. Sickly green and utterly malevolent. The heart, of the forest. She was close, so close to her destination. But something was wrong. The air here felt thick and cloying, tainted with a miasma of decay and despair. This was not the vibrant, life-giving center of the Fey realm that Kiedmon had described. This was a place of death and darkness, of corruption and blight. Samantha struggled to her feet, every muscle screaming in protest. The amulet lay heavy against her chest, its power a cold, dead weight. It had brought her here, she realized with a sinking sense of dread. Not to fulfill her destiny, but to feed it its own dark hunger. She had been a fool to trust it, to think she could control its malign influence. But she had no choice now. She had to keep going, had to see this through to the bitter end. For Gideon, for the sake of all the realms, Drawing in a deep, shuddering breath, she forced her leaden limbs into motion. Each step was agony, a fresh wave of pain crashing over her battered body. 
but she gritted her teeth and pushed on, following the eerie glow deeper into the forest's fetid heart. Thorny vines snagged at her clothes, tearing at her skin. Gnarled roots seemed to writhe beneath her feet, trying to trip her, to send her sprawling into the loathsome muck that squelched beneath her boots. And all the while the amulet pulsed against her chest. A heartbeat of pure malice, urging her onward to her doom. Just as Samantha thought she could go no further, just as her strength was about to fail her entirely, she stumbled into a clearing. The sickly green light was stronger here, emanating from a twisted tree at the center of the glade. Its trunk was a mass of puckered scars and weeping sores, its branches grasping and claw-like. And there, at its base, was the source of the light, a jagged stone altar, pitted and stained with the blood of countless sacrifices. And atop it, pulsing with that same awful radiance, the heart of forest, Samantha whispered, her voice hoarse with horror. Oh, gods, what is this place? You birthright. The voice was a cold, cruel whisper, slithering through the fetid air like a serpent. Samantha whirled, hands raised to cast a protective spell. But she was too late. A blast of dark energy caught her full in the chest, sending her flying back to land in a crumpled heap at the base of the altar. You foolish, foolish girl. The voice was closer now, dripping with malevolent glee. Did you really think you could control the amulet's power? That you could break the curse with the sheer force of your love and goodwill? A figure emerged from the shadows, tall and gaunt, swathed in robes of deepest black. But it was the face that made Samantha's blood run cold with recognition and fear. Alistair, she gasped, struggling to push herself upright. How? Her stepfather smiled, a thin, lipless slash of cruelty. Did you think I would let you come here alone? That I would allow you to claim the heart's power for yourself? He shook his head, sking softly. No, my dear. I have worked too long, sacrificed too much, to let a mere slip of a girl stand in my way. He took a step toward her, dark energy crackling at his fingertips. Samantha scrabbled backward, her hand falling on a jagged shard of stone. She gripped it tight, feeling its edges bite into her palm. The curse, she panted, her mind racing. It was never about the amulet at all, was it? It was about this place, about the heart. Clever, girl, Alistair sneered. The amulet was simply a means to an end, a way to ensure that only the most powerful, most determined wielder would find their way to the heart. And now that you have so obligingly led me to it, he raised his hand, dark fire coalescing in his palm. Samantha braced herself, preparing for the killing blow. But it never came. Instead, a blinding flash of silver light erupted between them, resolving into a familiar figure. Tall and proud, armored in shining steel, a blazing sword gripped in one sure hand. Gideon, Samantha breathed her heart leaping with a wild, desperate hope. You found me. The knight inclined his head, never taking his eyes off Alistair. Always, he said softly. I will always find you, Samantha. In this life and the next. Alistair snarled, dark energy whipping around him in a frenzy. You're too late, paladin. The heart is mine. Its power will be mine. And with it, I will bring the realms to their knees. He thrust his hand forward, a seething bolt of darkness streaking toward Gideon's heart. But the knight was ready. With a wordless cry, he brought his sword up, catching the malevolent energy on the shining blade. It shattered in a burst of searing, silver-white light. The power of the heart is not meant for the likes of you, Gideon growled, advancing on Alistair with implacable purpose. It belongs to the land, to the people, and I will die before I let you corrupt it with your greed and your malice. Alistair laughed, a sound like the cracking of bone. So, be it. And then they were upon each other, dark magic and holy, might clashing in a cataclysm of power. Samantha struggled to her feet, clutching the stone shard, her heart in her throat as she watched the man she loved battle for his life, for all their lives. But Alistair was strong, his darkness fed by centuries of hatred and bile. 
Slowly, inexorably, he drove Gideon back, the knight's armor smoking and sparking beneath the onslaught of unholy fire. Your love has made you weak, Alistair spat, punctuating each word with a fresh blast of dark energy. Just as it made your precious Victoria weak. Just as it will make Samantha weak. At the mention of her name, Gideon's head snapped around, his eyes finding hers across the battlefield. In that moment, Samantha saw everything. His fear for her, his desperate need to protect her. And beneath it all, shining like the very stars themselves. His love, pure and true, a light to banish even the deepest darkness. In that instant, Samantha understood what she had to do. Gripping the stone shard with white-knuckled fingers, she lunged forward, a wordless cry tearing from her throat. Alistair turned, his eyes widening in shock and fury as she bore down on him. But he was too slow. With all the strength born of love and desperation, Samantha plunged the shard into his black, withered heart. Alistair staggered back, an inhuman howl ripping from his throat. Dark blood, thick and oily, gushed from the wound, sizzling where it touched the ground. He clawed at his chest, his face contorting in agony and disbelief. What have you done? He rasped, his voice bubbling and wet. You foolish, foolish girl. And then he was falling, his body crumbling to ash and blowing away on the fetid breeze. In the silence that followed, Samantha could hear nothing but the thundering of her own heart, the ragged draw of Gideon's breath beside her. Samantha, he whispered, his armored hand finding hers, lacing their fingers together. You did it. You broke the curse. She turned to him, tears of relief and joy streaming down her face. No, my love. We did it. Together. He smiled then, a true, radiant smile that seemed to light up the whole world. Leaning in, he captured her lips with his own, pouring all his love, all his longing, into the kiss. And for a moment, one perfect, shining moment, there was no curse, no darkness. Only the two of them, hearts and souls, entwined for all eternity. But dear Naomi Wei was short-lived. As they clung to each other, savoring their hard-won victory, a sudden, searing pain lanced through Samantha's chest. She gasped, stumbling back, one hand flying to the amulet still pulsing at her throat. It was glowing, the eerie green light intensifying with each passing second. Samantha could feel its power surging through her, a raging torrent of darkness and despair. And with it, a terrible understanding. The heart, she whispered, her voice tight with pain and dread. Alistair was right. It's power. It's too much. I can't control it. Gideon's eyes widened, horror dawning in their azure depths. What are you saying? Tears streamed down Samantha's face, the amulet's power a searing agony in her veins. I'm saying, I have to let it go. I have to sacrifice myself, my love. It's the only way to save the realms. To save you. No! Gideon's cry was anguished, his grip on her tightening as if he could hold her there by sheer force of will. I won't let you do this. I won't lose you, not now. Not after everything. But Samantha was already pulling away, her heart shattering with every step. You have to. She whispered, her voice choked with sobs. Please, Gideon. Let me go. Let me do this one last thing. For love. For us. And then she was turning, staggering towards the altar with its pulsing, malevolent heart. Every step was agony, the amulet's power tearing at her, ripping her apart from the inside out. But she didn't falter, didn't hesitate. This was her destiny. The prophecy Seedmon had spoken of, the fate she had been born to fulfill. A final sacrifice, a love to shatter even the darkest curse. As she reached the altar, she turned one last time. Gideon was on his knees, his face a mask of grief and despair. I love you, she mouthed, pouring a lifetime of longing and tenderness into those three simple words. And then, with a final gasping sob, she plunged her hand into the heart of the forest and let the light take her. 
light, dotty, blinding, searing, all-consuming. It filled Samantha's vision, her mind, her very soul. She was lost in it, drowning in a sea of pure, unadulterated power. The heart of the forest, the source of all life and magic in the Fey realm, and she had unleashed it. The pain was beyond anything she had ever known. Every nerve, every cell screamed in agony as the ancient magic tore through her, ripping her apart and remaking her anew. She could feel it scouring away the darkness, the corruption that had festered in the heart for so long under Alistair's malign influence. But it was too much. No mortal form could contain such power, such raw, primal energy. Samantha could feel herself unraveling, her very essence dissipating into the light. Soon there would be nothing left of her. No body, no soul. Just an echo on the wind, a memory in the minds of those who had loved her. Gideon, dot, dot. The thought of him, of leaving him, was a pain sharper than any magic could inflict. She clung to his image, his strong, steady presence, as the light consumed her. If this was to be her end, she would go to it with his name on her lips and his love in her heart. But even as she surrendered to the inevitable, even as she prepared to let go and allow the light to take her, something shifted. The pain, the unbearable pressure of the heart's power, began to recede. Slowly, incrementally, like the tide drawing back from the shore. And in its place, a new sensation. A warmth, gentle and nurturing, suffusing her battered body and soul. It felt like, like coming home. Like being wrapped in a love so pure, so unconditional, it could banish all fear and doubt. Samantha opened her eyes, blinking against the still blinding glare. She was standing in the clearing, the twisted tree and blood stained altar gone as if they had never been. In their place, a shimmering pool, its surface a mirror of stars and moonlight. And there, at its center, a figure, tall and ethereal, with hair the color of autumn leaves and eyes that glowed with an inner fire. Samantha knew her, recognized her with a bone-deep certainty. Victoria, she breathed, awe and wonder suffusing her voice. The ancient witch, Gideon's long-lost love, smiled. It was a smile of such warmth, such radiant joy. It brought tears to Samantha's eyes. My child, she said, her voice a melody on the breeze. You have done it. You have broken the curse, restored the balance that was lost so long ago. Samantha shook her head, confusion warring with the hope swelling in her chest. But the heart. Its power. I thought. You thought it would destroy you? Victoria's smile softened, became tinged with a gentle understanding. Oh, my brave, selfless girl. The heart's power was never meant to destroy. It was meant to heal to nurture, to bring life and light to a world too long shrouded in darkness. She extended a hand, slender and graceful. Come, then. Let me show you. Hardly daring to breathe, Samantha stepped forward. As her fingers brushed Victoria's, the world around them shimmered and changed. Suddenly, they were standing in a glade Samantha knew all too well. The clearing where she had first met Gideon, where their fates had become irrevocably entwined. But it was different now. The trees, once gnarled and twisted with the amulet's dark influence, now stood tall and proud, their leaves a riot of vibrant green. Flowers bloomed in the lush grass, their petals bright and fragrant. And there, in the center of it all, Gideon, Samantha whispered, her heart leaping in her chest. He was kneeling, his head bowed, his shoulders shaking with silent sobs. In his hands, the amulet, now dark and lifeless. A disbelieving laugh bubbled up in Samantha's throat. She had done it. She had broken the curse, freed him from its poisonous hold. Go to him, Victoria murmured, her eyes shining with joyful tears. He has waited so long, endured so much. It is time for you both to live, to love, as you were always meant to. Samantha turned to her, a thousand questions on her lips. But Victoria was already fading, 
her form dissolving into motes of shimmering light. Remember, her voice whispered on the breeze. The true power, the greatest magic, lies not in any relic or artifact. It lies within. In the strength of your heart, the purity of your love. That is the light that will guide you, always. And then she was gone, leaving Samantha alone in the sunlit glade. No, not alone. Never alone, not anymore. Gideon, she called, her voice trembling with barely contained joy. His head snapped up, his eyes wide and disbelieving as they landed on her. For a moment, he seemed frozen, unable to comprehend what he was seeing. And then he was on his feet, the amulet falling forgotten to the grass as he ran to her. Samantha met him halfway, leaping into his arms with a cry of pure, unbridled happiness. He caught her, crushing her to his chest, his face buried in her hair as he whispered her name over and over. Samantha. Oh God, Samantha. She clung to him, tears streaming down her face as she rained kisses over every inch of him she could reach. His brow, his cheeks, his lips. She couldn't get close enough, couldn't hold him tightly enough. After everything they had been through, all the pain and fear and heartbreak to be here in his arms. It was a miracle. A dream come true. I thought I had lost you, Gideon choked out, his voice raw with emotion. When you, when you let go, when the light took you, I thought. She silenced him with a kiss, pouring all her love, all her devotion, into the meeting of their lips. Never, she whispered fiercely. I will never leave you, Gideon. In this life or the next, my heart, my soul, belongs to you. Always. He made a sound somewhere between a laugh and a sob, his arms tightening around her. And mine to you, he vowed, his forehead pressed to hers. Forever and always, Samantha. My love, my life, my everything. They stood there, wrapped in each other, in the sheer, overwhelming joy of being alive and together. The curse was broken, the realms were safe, and they had a future, bright and glorious, stretching out before them. But even as they reveled in their victory, in the promise of the life they would build together, a flicker of unease stirred in Samantha's heart. A sense, bone deep and undeniable, that their story was not yet over. That there were still secrets to uncover, battles to be fought. She thought of Alistair, of the hatred and malice that had driven him. He had not been acting alone, she was sure of it. There were others out there, dark forces that would seek to exploit the power of the heart, the weakness of mortal hearts. And she thought of her own heritage, the legacy of magic and destiny that flowed through her veins. Victoria's words echoed in her mind, a promise and a prophecy all in one. The true power lies within. In the strength of your heart, the purity of your love. Samantha knew with a certainty that went beyond thought or reason, that her journey was just beginning. That there were more trials to face, more sacrifices to be made. But she would face them all, as long as Gideon was by her side. Their love had broken a curse, had saved the realms from darkness and despair. And it would be their love, pure and true and unshakable, that would light the way forward. No matter what challenges lay ahead, Gideon must have sensed the turn of her thoughts, the mingled excitement and apprehension humming beneath her skin. He drew back slightly, his hand coming up to cup her cheek, his thumb brushing tenderly over the arch of her cheekbone. What is it, my love? He asked softly, his eyes searching hers. What troubles you on this day of days? Samantha leaned into his touch, savoring the warmth the pure, perfect rightness of it. Nothing, she said, smiling up at him through a sheen of joyful tears. And everything. I just... I can't help but feel that this is not the end of our story. That there are more chapters to be written, more adventures to be had. To her relief, Gideon did not dismiss her fears, did not try to soothe them with platitudes or false assurances. He simply nodded his gaze clear and steadfast as it held hers. Then we will write them together, he said, quiet conviction ringing in every word. Whatever comes, whatever fate has in store, we will face it as one.
as we always have and always will. He sealed the vow with a kiss, soft and sweet and brimming with promise. And as Samantha lost herself in the taste of him, in the sheer, perfect rightness of his arms around her and his heart beating in time with her own, she knew that he was right. Come what may, they would face it together. And together they could overcome anything. For their love, born of magic and tempered by sacrifice, was a force beyond reckoning. A light to banish even the deepest darkness. And it would be that love, burning bright and unquenchable, that would guide them through all the chapters to come.